Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I wanted to share um, my experience recently with this software called Open Drone Map. Um, so what it is, it's a free open source uh, solution, software solution for processing drone imagery um, for, for mapping purposes. Um, so what exactly can we do with this software? Um, so for example, we have these images from a drone um, taken periodically. As you can see, it looks like we're flying the drone if you uh, go over the images like this. Um, so what an ortho mosaic is, it's just it's basically just a, a mosaic of all of these images stitched together to make um, a product, a map, that looks like this. Um, so they have software out there in the world that costs a lot of money that, uh, that produces something like this. Uh, but this open drone map is, is totally free. So I wanted to share how uh, we could get this up and running on an AWS instance um, and get something looking like this. So, so this is WebODM. This is the basically the, the GUI interface to ODM. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it on AWS and how you can create a, uh, a mosaic like this. Um, so if, if you guys are interested and you want to see how we can get this up and running, um, just keep on watching. So first, I'm on their GitHub page here, github.com slash opendronemap slash webodm. And if you scroll way down to the bottom, they have instructions on how to get this set up um, in the cloud. So basically, here it is, run it on Google or run it on the cloud, Google Compute or Amazon AWS. Um, the instructions are the same for both. So at this point, I'm going to just head over to AWS and I'm assuming you guys are a little familiar with uh, AWS and have an account set up. Um, if you don't, there's plenty of videos out there on, on what to do, but we're just going to go to EC2 here and that's their Amazon's um, compute area. It's basically where you can start servers. Um, and we're going to go over here and we're going to launch a new instance. And if you go back to this page, they have recommended um, machine specs here. And they say 100 gigs of free disk space and 16 gigs of RAM. So we're just going to set that up for now. Um, we're going to install this on Ubuntu 18.04. So this is that um, package right there. Now we want something that has um, 16 gigs of RAM. So just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to choose this general purpose T2X large. Now I'm only going to set this up and run it uh, for a little bit, then I'm going to shut it down because this is going to cost um, not a lot of money, but a couple, uh, maybe a dollar or two. Um, so I'm just going to do that. And for here, just click through this. This is all fine. We're going to add some storage. This is where we need to make it 100. Um, you can click through this. Now here we're going to have to add um, some rules. So we need to add some security or make some security changes that are, are going to allow A, us to from our desktop to remotely go into this computer. So uh, we need this SSH rule set up in port 22 and I'm just gonna say my IP so this means only my IP address is gonna be able to access this which is fine for right now and we're actually gonna add another rule here and this is the uh, the port that this web ODM is going to use um, and if we go back to these instructions they do mention it I think right here so port 8000, so that's the port that we need to open up on our instance here. So 8000, and I'll make that from my IP again. And just go to review and launch. Uh, all right, and launch it. Now here you just have to select um, a key. I'm actually going to create a new key pair and call it ODM. Uh, testing and download that 
and launch the instance. All right, so I'm on a Windows uh, machine right now. I have software called Putty. Um, and if you're not familiar with this, it's just a way on a Windows machine to be able to SSH into um, a machine. So you notice we downloaded this PEM file. In order to work with PuTTY, which is kind of Windows based, we need to convert this PEM into a, a PPK file. So when you download PuTTY, it comes with this thing called PuTTY Gen. And basically we just need to load in that file we just downloaded. Um, where did it go? Right here. And we need to save the private key. That's okay. And we need to save it as a PPK file. So just click on the PAM and just, we're going to name it the exact same thing, but change the extension to PPK. All right, I think that generated it. Yep, it's already there. So we're good with this. And it's just like a slightly different formatting. Um, so if you look at this in Notepad versus the PEM, they're just slightly different formats. So it's just PuTTY is expecting it in this format, and normally it's in this format. So let's go back to here, check out our instances. So it looks like it's already up and running. Uh, I'm just going to rename this ODM machine. And if you click on it, you'll see you have um, this public DNS. We can just copy this and go to PuTTY and just paste this in. And now we'll go down to SSH and auth. This is where we need to give it that PPK file. And just click open and click yes. Um, so when you first are in a Ubuntu machine, I think the username is Ubuntu. Yep. So just clear the screen. Okay, so now we have um, just a, a basic Ubuntu machine. So we're ready to go follow their instructions here. Um, so we're going to run sudo app-get-update. So update the packages. Alright, that was fast. Uh, upgrade. And just click yes or type Y and hit enter. This is just getting all the latest and greatest stuff installed, which is always a good idea. Um, so we're actually, they recommend um, running this in a Docker image. So they already have a Docker image all set up. So I was very impressed with how simple and easy this is all, all to set up. So that's what we need to install next is Docker Compose. And I'm not super familiar with Docker, but you don't really have to be. Um, it's packaged in, in such a way that it's very easy to get up, up and running. So I don't think this takes too long. Just let it process. All right, now we're going to install Docker, Compose, and click Y and Enter. So I actually don't even have a drone yet. Um, I'm in the process of getting one, but I've been practicing with um, small data sets that you can find online, and they actually provide on their websites some links to data sets you can play with. So I'm super excited to get get a journey and start making my own mosaics. All right, next step is install Python, or actually pip for Python. So 
So I've also been experimenting with different AWS instance sizes. Um, and I actually recently got a server, an old Dell R710 server at my house, and I've been running it on that um, just for fun, just to mess around and play with play with it. All right, so we just installed Python. Now we actually have to clone the repository. So that's um, this is what we're cloning um, right here. Oh, it's the no. This is it. Web ODM. So we're cloning this, and this is where all the files and software code is. So copy that. Oops, sorry. Uh, paste it in. Okay, so now if you type, or I'm just gonna clear the screen and type ls to view what's in this directory. It, it cloned this web ODM and it made a folder, so we need to go into that folder. So if you say cd capital W and hit tab, it should auto complete it and hit enter and list again. This is what's inside this repository. Um, so the next step here is to actually start this web, OD, like run this script, this um, start uh, thing that starts web ODM. So if you just copy this, I keep clicking that by accident and paste it in. Oh, I spelled sudo wrong. Sudo. All right. So it's saying there's no containers to start. So now it's it's going out and downloading everything it needs to. So once this completes, we can access WebODM from our public DNS EC2. Um, um, whatever you call it, the public DNS of it, and on port 8000. And what we'll see is this. Um, so I don't think this takes too long. Um, to get up and running, so I'm just going to leave the video going. And then once it's up and running, I'll show you guys what it looks like. And then I think in the next video, I'll just go through just a sample data set, uh, just the ones I've been going through. Yep, so we ran that, and then you can now access it via the public IP address. Cool. So this, you won't have to run this every time you start your image. Um, it's just this first time because it's not there yet. Okay, so now it's creating everything. I think it's almost finished, actually. Cool, yep. It's just about finished. I was going to stop the video, but it's almost finished, so I'll just hang on. Cool. So it says, congratulations. If there are no errors, Web ODM should be up and running. Awesome. So we can just go back to our EC2 instance and grab this and paste it. And then just colon and then port 8000. And there it is. I mean, that was super simple to get up and running. And this can be ac accessed, uh, actually not everywhere in the world, just because we specified just our IP. But you could easily change that. Um, so I'm just going to make an account and log in. And there we go. Or uh, we have our own instance of WebODM up and running. So I mean, that was super quick. Took less than 15 minutes to make this video. Um, I'm really impressed with web ODM and uh, how, how simple it was to get up and running. So next video, I'm just going to go through a sample project here. Um, so I'll see you then.